Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service according to actual sales records. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel a first with you, too. Find out for yourself. Listen to the rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the sweet and swingy songs of Connie Haynes. And this being October 19th, we remind you that just 50 years ago tonight, the governor of North Carolina turned to the governor of South Carolina and said, uh, Hey! Well, Costello, I just stopped by your mailbox and found a letter for you. Shall I read it to you? Why, I can read it myself. I'm illiterate. No. Well, what do you know, Abbott? It's another letter from my cousin, Corporal Hugo Costello. It's a B letter. No, Costello, you don't mean a B letter. You mean a V letter. No, this is a B letter. He's putting a B on me for $10. <laughs> and besides, Hugo's in the guardhouse again. What did you wrong this time? Well, he nailed a picture of a pinup girl on the wall of his tent. Oh, nonsense. Why yeah. would they throw him in the guardhouse just for nailing a picture of the wall on his tent? Well, there was a sergeant standing outside. The tent was thin, the nail was long, and the sergeant was tall. Do you get the point? No. He did. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope you're not going to send Hugo the money he asked for. Oh, yes, I am, Abbott. I went down to the bank and drew out my $75 that I made this summer working on Uncle Artie Stebbins' farm. Now, wait a minute, Costello. You can't draw that money out without consulting me. It so happens that I have a joint account. Not anymore, Abbott. I just cleaned out the joint. Uh, <laughs> Costello, you can't get away with this. Now, I want that $75 right away. As your manager, I'm entitled to 10%. That means that out of the 75, I get 50 and you get 25. Well, that's okay. I mean, after all, but I'm not trying to trim. I'm not trying to trim. Oh, no, certainly not. Wait a minute! Now, what's the matter? What's the matter? Are, are you trying to tell me that 10% of 75 is 50? Well, certainly you don't think I tried to cheat you, do you? Well, you cheated me last night when we were playing tiddlywinks. That, tiddlywinks? That's ridiculous. How could I cheat you playing tiddlywinks? You were using loaded tiddly. Oh. <laughs> Costello, I'm going to prove to you right now that 10% of 75 is 50. Now, I'll do it by multiplying. Now, look. Now, uh, 10 times 7 is 70. 10 times 5 is 50. 70 and 50 is 120. Now, of course, in California, half of everything goes to my wife. Half of 120 is 60. Deduct $8 for federal tax and $2 for Social Security leaves. $50 for me and 25 for you, I take it. Hey, you might as well take it. You've taken everything out. <laughs> now, that's ridiculous. I'm trying to help you, Lou. Abbott, you're loading the tiddlies again. Oh, come, come, Costello. There are the figures right in front of you. you. And remember, figures don't lie. No, but sometimes liars figure. If I may corn a phrase, if I may corn a phrase, and I think I will. Now, no, I... Corn it. Now, now, just a minute. I'm going to do the figure this time. Only instead of multiplying, I will detract. Now, now, 50 won't go into 10, no matter how much you shove it. No. So instead, we will use cubic feet, which is two feet to the foot. Now, so wait a minute. Two feet to the foot? Yeah. How did you get the extra foot? I grew another foot this summer. All right, go ahead. Now, Abbott, please don't interrupt me. Now, to get 10% of 75, we divide by three, bring down four, hang up six, and carry Grant. <laughs> carry Grant. Carry Grant. He's getting kind of heavy. I think I'll unload him. <laughs> now, if X equals the sum of these days, I like that. The sum of these days! Uh, You're going to miss your fat Now, wait a minute. Baby. Wait a minute. What are you doing? What are you days. doing? What are you doing, Costello? Now you got me all mixed up. Where, what was I doing? You were saying oh, no. today. Quiet, now, quiet. Costello. Look, be frank. Tell me the truth. Do you know anything about figures? Oh, I've whistled at a few in my day. Oh, that is... <laughs> Please, that isn't what I mean. Look, to prove to you that you know nothing about figures, I'm going to give you a very simple mathematical problem. All right, Abbott. I'll tell you what to make it a very easy one this right. time. All None right, of right. that tough stuff Please. like how much is two and two. All right, all right, all right. One and two is... Easier than that. Make that one and one. All right, all right, very well. Look, here. Here's the problem. Now, let's say, uh, say you're 40 years old and you're in love with a little girl, say, 10 years old. I'm in love with a 10-year-old girl? Yes, yes, yes. This one's going to be a pit. Well, what do you mean? Now I'm going around with a 10-year-old girl. So, wait a minute. You've got a good idea where I'm going to wind up. All right, all right. In, a, in the nursery. Who cares where you wind up? Now, look, you couldn't marry this 10-year-old girl, could you? Not unless I come from the mountain. Uh, and now, look, wait a minute. Now, just a... Look, Costello. Look, this little girl is hypothetical. She's what? Hypothetical. Keep her away from me. That stuff is messy. No, no, no. Will you please let me finish the problem? You're 40 years old. This little girl is 10. You're four times as old as she is. So you wait five years. Now the little girl is 15 and you're 45. You're only three times as old as she is. 
Now you wait 15 years more. Now the little girl is 30 and you're 60. You're only twice as old as she is. She's catching, catching up. up. Oh, yeah, she's catching, catching up. up. Yes, yes, she's catching old. Up. you got to notice those things. What page are you on? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, anyhow, here is the big question. Here's the big question. How long do you have to wait until you and the little girl are the same age? Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, if I keep waiting for that girl, she'll pass me by. What do you mean? I mean, she'll wind up older than I am. Oh, And then she'll have to wait for me. Why should she wait for you? I was nice enough to wait for her. Wait a minute. After all, if the girl is willing to marry me, I'm willing to marry her. Oh, you are? Sure. Wait a minute. Do you know this girl? No. Then why should you marry a girl you don't even know? I mean, I... I, Ah, you... Ah, you dope. I mean, I'm, I'm... How can you expect me to trust you with her money? Oh, trust with the money, huh? Yes. Well, if you think you're so smart, let me ask you a question. Certainly, ask me anything. All right. What's the difference between? The difference between? Yeah. Between what? See? He's stuck already. Ah, oh, get out of here. Well, perhaps this isn't the right moment to be serious, yet any moment is the right moment to suggest to you that you try camels on your T-zone. That's T for taste and T for throat. Because what could be more important than giving your throat proper care and attention, including the right choice of a cigarette? Try the kind, cool mildness of camels on your throat and see how your throat feels at the end of a long day's smoking. And try camels' rich, full, fresh flavor on your taste. See for yourself how that flavor holds up, pack after pack, no matter how many you smoke. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels, try them on your T-Zone today. Well, Bud Abbott may question Lou Costello's mathematical ability, but we're sure no one will question the rhythmic talents of Freddie Rich and his orchestra as they play I'll Be Seeing You. Come on, Castella, jump into the car. We're right. going downtown, put your $75 back in the bank. Come on, step okay. on the starter. The oil is too thick. Will you please get going, Costello? Please, before the bank's closed. Costello. What? Watch where you're driving. Give that pedestrian the right of way. Okay. Oh, you big fat dummy. Can't you see where you're going? I got you, didn't I? (laughs) Costello, you bumped into that woman. Well, you told me to. I did not. I said give her the right of way. I thought you said give it to her right of way. (laughs) Oh, oh. 
Oh, here comes a motorcycle cop. Fall over to the curb there, you. Hey, just a minute, copper. Don't get that motorcycle too close to this car. You want to scrape the paint? <laughs> well, don't lean it against my car. Well, never mind that. What's the idea driving so fast? Going to a fire? Hey, Abbott, there's a fire. Come on, let's go. Let's All of us, let's go. Let's tell there isn't any fire. This guy just told me there was a fire. I did not. I just asked if you were going to a fire. Sure, I'll go. I like to watch fires. <laughs> Listen, Shorty, there isn't any fire. Now, didn't you just ask me if I was going to a fire? Yes, I did, but I always ask that. Whether there's a fire or not? Yes. Let me smell your breath. <laughs> Look, you, I've had enough of your gun. You just made an improper turn. You were driving on the sidewalk. You went through two red lights and you struck a pedestrian while going 60 miles an hour. 60 miles a minute. An hour. A minute. My car won't go an hour. <laughs> All right, wise guy, here's your ticket. Now, just a minute, officer. You can't give my friend a ticket. Oh, I can't. Can. No. He hasn't even got a driver's license. <laughs> And that don't entitle you to give me a ticket if I ain't got a driver's license. It don't. No, because if Abbott says I ain't got none, I... What are you telling a man, Abbott? Tell the truth. Tell I mean, the... what are you telling the guy? Not... <laughs> You're going to get me stuck with a fine. What do you care about a fine? You've got a pocket full of money. You cleaned out the bank this morning, didn't you? Oh-ho! Robbing the bank, eh? Oh, no. You'll get 20 years for this. Keep an eye on this crook they call a patrol wagon. Oh, Abbott, look what you got me into... Now they're going to throw me in jail. I don't want to go to jail, Habit. I wouldn't look good with that prison parlor. I'm too young and pretty. <laughs> I'm cute. Yes, yes. <laughs> Costello, they can't throw you in jail. This is all a mistake. Now, all we have to do is get a good attorney. I am your Rancho Grande. As a lawyer, I am Grande. Woo! <laughs> Gentlemen, I hear you're looking for a lawyer. Hey, it's our friend Kitzel. Yeah. Uh, Kitzel, how did you know we wanted a lawyer? A little boy, they told me. He said, cheap, cheap. <laughs> yeah, and I know what kind of a lawyer you are. Who told you? A little duck. He went quack, quack. Costello, I agree with you. Kitzel's no lawyer. Oh, fish posh. Kitzel's no lawyer. I'll ask you to know you're talking to a college man. Why, I studied law in New York. NYU? And why not? <laughs> well, come, 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 my chubby little cucumber. I'm going to defend you in court on a 90-90 basis. What's a 90-90 basis? Well, if we win, I get $90. And if we lose, you get 90 days. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I'll meet you by the courthouse promptly 4 o'clock. Uh, where are you going now? Oh, I got to go to my office and draw up my brief. You got to draw up your brief? Yeah. Well, here's a safety pin. You can pin your briefs up right here in front of everybody. <laughs> pin up my briefs in front of everybody. I don't like it. Now, look, Abbott, you got me in enough trouble. I don't want this Kitzel for a lawyer. I think he's a phony. Oh, do, 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 do. Just oh, you heard a me. second. <laughs> just a second. That's an insult. And I'm giving you just two seconds to take it back. The time is up. What are you going to do about it? I'll give you an extension. <laughs> You know something with me as your lawyer, Mr. Costello, you can't possibly lose the case because we're going to plead insanity. Insanity? Uh-huh. But I'm not crazy. Maybe not, but I am. <laughs> Hoo-hoo, what fun we're going to have in court. Why I handled such cases as mashers, slashers, and bed money cashers, pickups, pickups, and a few friends with hiccups, savings, and abettings, and two shotgun weddings, Benny the Beezer, and a gorgeous trip teaser. Not to mention... Hijackers, safe crackers, and mother-in-law smackers, robbers and fakers, and piggy bank shakers, forgers and checkers, and Griffith Park neckers, gyps, drips, and a girl with fat hips. And she looks sweet upon the seat of a fine Now, an important message from our Uncle Sam to his many loyal nieces. Some of America's finest young women wear the bright and flattering navy blue and gold, and they're proud of it. Now, more waves are urgently needed. The starting pay is equivalent to $141 a month, and with it go free medical and dental care, low-cost insurance, income tax exemptions, reduced transportation rates, theater admissions, all making the money side of being a wave still more attractive. 
So visit your nearest recruiting office now. Find out all about the waves. Well, our lovely singing star, Connie Haynes, is all ready to musically tell us, is you in or is you ain't, my baby? Come on, Connie. I got a man who's always late. Anytime we have a date, but I love him. Cause I want him I'm gonna ask him Is you, is, is you ain't my baby The way you're acting lately makes me doubt You sit still my baby, baby my flame and your heart done gone out. A man is a creature that has always been strange. Just when you're sure of one, you find he's gone and made a change. If you is, if you ain't my baby, maybe baby found somebody new. My baby, still my baby, too. A man is a creature who's always been strange. When you're sure of one, you'll find he's gonna make a change. Is you, is, or is you ain't my baby? Or has my baby found somebody new? Or is my baby? Johnny. On the back covers of many magazines right now are the pictures of two lovely girls, as easy on the eye as that song you just heard was easy on the ear. Two debutantes of Greenwich, Connecticut, Renee and Cynthia Tebow, who also happen to be busy workers in a war plant. And also, both of them, ardent camel fans. My taste adores them, Cynthia says. And her sister Renee will tell you they're so mild and gentle to my throat. Millions of smokers say things like that about camels. Why don't you, too, try camels on your T-Zone? That's T for taste and T for throat. The best place to find out which cigarette is best for you. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels. They're mild yet full-flavored, too. Hear ye, hear ye. The third district court is now in session. This is the trial of the state versus Lou Costello. The state will now attempt to prove that Lou Costello is guilty. And I think we can do it, too. <laughs> you know, Abbott, I don't like the looks of this place. Quiet, Costello. Here comes a judge. He's a tall, bald headed man. What is this? The court of missing hairs? <laughs> order in the court. Order, order, order. One ham and cheese on a toasted roll. This is a courtroom, not a lunchroom. Then why are those 12 guys sitting over there at the counter? Those 12 men are the jury. 11 men and a foreman. Where are the other three guys? What are the three guys? He said there was 11 men and four men besides. That's 15 men. No, no, young man. There's only 12. 11 men with a foreman makes 12. 11 and 4 is 12? No, 11 and 4 is 15, but the foreman is just one man. Sometimes the jury has 12 jurymen. And they're all ladies. The four men, too? Certainly. <laughs> Let me smell your breath. Silence! Silence! It's the most stupid thing I've heard in all my years at the bar. Oh, a little less time at the bar, you wouldn't be so stupid. <laughs> Boy. Uh, we will proceed with the case. 
Lou Costello, you are charged with resisting an officer. You are charged with driving the wrong way on a one-way street. You are charged with going 60 miles an hour in a 25-mile zone, endangering the lives of pedestrians, and going through two red lights. What have you got to say? None of us is perfect. <laughs> Young man, I'm beginning to think that you're nothing but an imbecilic nincompoop. Your Honor, I resent that. You mean you deny it? No, I just resent it. <laughs> Silence, Costello. Officer Houlihan, present the evidence. Your Honor, I have here the woman whom this... Not lady... so loud! Oh, hello, Judgy. <laughs> I object to the witness being cute. She can be as cute as she likes. <laughs> uh, tell us your story, madam. Well, my name is Jennifer J. Walker, and I'm a sweater girl. You're a sweater girl? A big, skinny girl like you? How can you be a sweater girl? I don't wear them. I knit them. <laughs> this next line. I object! Now, oh, wait a minute. Why do you object? She's getting bigger laughs than I am. <laughs> <laughs> young lady, well, please tell the court where you were when this young man's car struck you. I was on my way home from work. I was hustling to catch the bus. Uh, where did he strike you? Between a hustle and a bus. <laughs> This whole case is a farce. But since this is your first offense, Mr. Costello, I'm willing to let you go with a warning and a suspended sentence. Thank you, Judge. I object. You can't dismiss this case without a fair trial. Yes, I demand a fair trial. Absolutely. What are you talking about, Abbott? Will you shut up? Ah, uh, wait what a minute. Credit? This guy wants to let me go. But I object. He hasn't heard your side of the case yet. I'm willing to forget all about it. No, you don't. We're going to fight this thing through if we have to drag you through the Supreme Court. Abbott, you're loading the tiddlies again. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. We're going to present our character witness. You can't do that. Uh, you mean you have no witness? I have no character. Uh, 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 never mind that, Costello. I've dug up a witness for you. It's your own little brother. Not little Sebastian. Yes. No. Yes. Not him. Yes. He is a character. Yes. <laughs> Come here, Sebastian. Coming, Uncle Bob. Hey, Louise! Here I am. What do you want me to ah, say? Quiet, quiet, Sebastian. Okay, don't yell quiet. at me. Don't yell at me. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Don't yell at me, Uncle Bob. One time you'll be... What's the matter with you? I don't care for you to judge either. Quiet. You realize it's a serious trial where your brother's very life might be at stake. I'm ashamed of you. Bitterly ashamed. Sebastian. Why do you do these things? Oh, I'm a bad... Who is this unruly brat? Hey, Uncle Bud, who is this wise guy with the black nightshirt? Quiet, Sebastian. Uh, take the witness stand. I don't want to take the stand. Young man, do as you're told. Sit down in front. I can't. I don't bend that way. <laughs> Order in the court. Now, young man, uh, what is your name? I said, what is your name? Young man, what is your name? Where do I find the place, will you? <laughs> oh, uh... Um... Um... My name, eh? Hey? Yes, your now name. I, okay. Se uh, Sebastian T. Costello. <laughs> <laughs> what is the T for? I beg your pardon? What is the tea for? My mother won't let me drink beer. <laughs> oh, let's proceed with the case. Bailiff, kindly swear in the witness. Uh, young man, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth? Or would you rather be a mule? <laughs> I'd like to hang one on his star. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Bailiff. Uh, let me handle the boy. Uh, look, Sebastian, do you know what will happen to you if you don't tell the truth? Yes, Uncle Bud. I won't go to heaven. And uh, what happens if you do tell the truth? My brother goes to jail. Uh, no, 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 Sebastian. I want you to tell the judge what a wonderful man your brother Louis is. I ain't talking till I get my 50 cents. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Well, what's the difference? We always come out even. Costello, you must be guilty. 
Even your little brother refuses to testify in your defense. Ah, don't pay any attention to my little brother, Judge. I hate to say this, but um, he isn't all there. Are you sure? I should be. I'm playing both parts. <laughs> Mr. Costello, in view of the new evidence in this case and your lack of defense, it is my painful duty to sentence you to 90 days at hard labor. Court adjourned. Well, old pal, see what I did for you? That's a real pal. This guy wasn't going to give you anything. But I fought for you. I got you 90 days, didn't I? You certainly did. Certainly. But you could have fought a little harder and got me to chair. Uh, you want to go back? No. No. Keep your mouth shut, bud. Keep it shut. All right. Come here, Sebastian. Come here to your brother. Now, look. What do you want, Louis? I'm awfully sorry that this had to happen to you. It breaks my heart to think that I won't be able to see you for 90 days. That's all right, Sebastian. I can take it. Louie, it's going to be tough on me. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you too, Sebastian. <laughs> Louie, before you go, there's one little favor I'd like to ask you. All right, Sebastian. <laughs> All right, Sebastian. What is it? While you're away... Go ahead. While you're away... Yes? Could I use your loaded tiddlies? We're going to bring you Abbott and Costello in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week, tonight we salute lions of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, wearer of the Bronze Star for bravery in action in the initial landing on Saipan. In your honor, Lieutenant Hines, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas 400,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the three Camel Radio shows honors a Yank of the Week by sending free 400,000 Camel cigarettes overseas. A total of more than a million Camels sent free each week. In this country, the Camel caravans traveling from camp to camp have thanked audiences of more than four million Yanks with free shows and free Camels. Camel broadcasts to go out to the United States three times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore. Monday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And now a few final words from Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Thanks, Ken. Well, Costello, now that you've got yourself out of jail, let's go home. Not now. i got to get my uncle out of jail. What's he in for? Oh, it was a frame-up. That little Sebastian, he framed my uncle up. What do you mean? They accused him of stealing a tub of butter. A tub of butter? i got to get him out right away. What's the hurry? We're all out of butter again. Ah, oh, stop. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, folks. Tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show. And remember, try camels on your throat and your taste. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. Now, after all, you don't do your pipe smoking on a desert island. There are folks around you when you smoke, and you really ought to think of them as well as yourself when you pick a pipe tobacco. If you want to make both you and the folks around you happy, why don't you pack your pipe with Prince Albert? That swell, aged-in-the-wood aroma is as welcome to people around you as it is to you. And that flavor, mild, mellow, yet rich and full-bodied, because Prince Albert is no bite treated, and it's crimp cut to pack firmly, draw smoothly, and burn evenly right down to the bottom of the bowl. You'll find just about 50 pipefuls in one red two-ounce Prince Albert package. A thrifty 50. Start P.A. today. The Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes was directed by Dick Mack, and this is Ken Niles wishing you a pleasant good night from Hollywood.
This is the National Broadcasting Company.